As the train pulled away, I saw my daughter waving at me, her face glowing with a wide smile. It had been nearly two months since she last saw her father, so I knew she must have been eagerly anticipating their reunion. I sent a message to my husband just as my daughter boarded the train. About four hours later, after I had returned home, my phone rang. Was my daughter, just as I had asked her to call me when she arrived. I expected her to share the news of her arrival. Hello, Sarah. Did you make it to San Francisco and catch up with your dad? Her response was unexpected and tinged with distress. Mom, can you come and pick me up, please? What's wrong? Did something happen? I didn't get to see dad. What do you mean? I don't know what's going on, she said, her voice trembling. I haven't heard from him, and when I went to his house, a strange woman turned me away. What? Let me introduce myself, I'm Liddy. I live with my husband Robert and our 11-year-old daughter Sarah. I was still in college when I became pregnant with Robert's child, so now I'm 32 years old. Despite the challenges, I managed to finish my degree with support from my parents. Since then, I've been a stay-at-home mom. The unexpected pregnancy and our early marriage brought a lot of confusion and concern from those around us, and we faced some difficulties. Robert assured me that he had always intended to marry me and that our marriage was only a matter of time. After graduating from college, my husband landed a job at a prestigious company. With a generous starting salary and the benefit of company housing, we were able to avoid financial struggles and enjoy a happy life together. Although we didn't experience a traditional honeymoon phase, we were perfectly content. Our daughter was so beautiful that any concerns about our early marriage quickly faded. My husband adored her and took care of her on weekends, which allowed me to relax and spend time with friends. I didn't have to worry about dressing up or anything like that, and I had no complaints about our life. As time flew by, our daughter started elementary school. By then my husband had been with the company for about seven years and had earned a promotion. His increased responsibilities meant he came home later and later. Despite this, we made the most of our weekends with family road trips, creating many cherished memories. I believe that these happy times would continue for a long time. One day, as I was settling into our routine, the company announced a transfer for my husband. Despite our arguments about family considerations and the fact that our daughter is now 11 years old, the company insisted on the move. Until now, his reluctance to relocate was understandable because our daughter was still quite young. But now, with her age and his career's importance in mind, the company was firm that this transfer was crucial for his career advancement. The company he works for is large and has many potential replacements, but this move is essential for his future promotions. Our daughter will soon be starting junior high and then high school, and I want her to go to college as well, which will come with its own set of expenses. Given all this, I reluctantly agreed to the transfer, hoping it would be beneficial for his career. I was informed that the assignment would last approximately six months. Well, six months should be manageable, I thought to myself. However, my daughter was quite attached to her father and felt anxious about being separated from him. My husband reassured her that he would call every day and make an effort to keep her from feeling lonely. He also promised that they could spend weekends together, ensuring he would remain a significant part of her life. It was clear how much he cared about his family. My daughter agreed, saying, I'll miss daddy, but I'll manage. We both waved him off with smiles, though my daughter's sadness was evident. Just three days later, my husband called us via video chat, spending a considerable amount of time talking with our daughter. He reached out before she even had a chance to miss him. I found myself laughing, amused by their interactions and thinking about who was the more childlike one in the conversation. It was heartwarming to witness their bond through the screen, and I felt reassured that their relationship remained strong despite the distance. During the first weekend after his move, my husband was too busy to come home. However, the following week he managed to make time and arrived on a Friday. I was incredibly grateful for his effort to be with us, despite his demanding schedule. My daughter was overjoyed to have dinner with her father after such a long time apart. 
but about two months into his new routine, I noticed a shift in his behavior. He had initially called our daughter for video chats every three days, but the frequency of these calls dwindled, and he eventually stopped calling altogether. I understood that he was swamped with work and had to handle all the household chores on his own. I knew that as he settled into his new job, he might also start socializing more with colleagues. I didn't want to add pressure by insisting he stay in touch regularly. With this in mind, I chose not to push him and hoped he would find a better balance as time went on. However, my husband began contacting me less frequently, and his visits home became increasingly rare. I tried to explain to my daughter that her father was swamped with work, but I could tell she was struggling with his absence, even if she didn't voice her feelings. This situation was far from ideal, and despite understanding his busy schedule, I asked him to at least make a brief call to her, even if it was just for five minutes. Our daughter often seemed lonely at home. My husband apologized, saying, Oh, I'm sorry, but he still didn't reach out to Sarah. Her birthday was approaching, set for the coming Saturday, and I hoped he might come home to surprise us. Sarah also held out hope, saying, Maybe Daddy will come home. But on her birthday, he didn't come, nor did he call to wish her a happy birthday. This time Sarah was deeply disappointed. I was so upset that I called my husband several times and left multiple messages. Lately he hadn't been answering my calls or returning them, so I persisted, making several attempts to reach him. After about the fifth call, he finally answered. What's going on? Why have you been calling me so much? What are you doing? What? Today was Sarah's birthday. It's Saturday and you didn't come home. You didn't even call to wish her a happy birthday. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. I didn't realize how important it was for her to see me on her birthday. I know she was looking forward to spending time with me. Tell her I'm really sorry and wish her a happy birthday. Despite my frustration, he only offered apologies. I gave up and ended the call, but my anger flared up again as I hung up the phone. Please think about your daughter and take better care of her. You might be busy, but I still think you're being disrespectful. I sent him this message and his response was simply, I understand. I'm sorry. Things didn't improve after that. Another month passed and summer vacation began for my daughter. Recently, she told me that if her father couldn't come to see her, she would go to visit him. She's been repeating this every day since the vacation started. I decided it was a good opportunity to let my daughter visit my husband on her own. She was eager for the adventure and excited about trying something new. We live in Los Angeles and my husband is in San Francisco, so she could easily travel by train. I would drive her to the station and my husband would pick her up at the other end. He agreed to the plan and finally my daughter would get to see her father after a long time apart. On Saturday I saw her off and as the train departed, she waved at me with a wide smile. It had been two months since she last saw her father, so I knew she was really looking forward to this reunion. I sent a message to my husband as soon as my daughter boarded the train. A few hours later, around noon after I had returned home, my daughter called me. She had boarded the train early that morning, and I assumed she was calling to let me know she had arrived and met up with my husband, possibly after having lunch together. Hello, Sarah. Did you make it to San Francisco and meet up with your father? Her response was unexpected and filled with distress. Mom, please come and pick me up right now. What? What's wrong? I didn't see Daddy. What do you mean? I'm not sure. I haven't heard from him. When I got to his house, a strange woman told me I couldn't come in. What? What did she say exactly? No, I need to pick up my daughter as soon as possible. Where are you now? I'm back at the San Francisco station. Then find a fast food restaurant and wait there. Huckley got into the car and headed for the station. I barely managed to buy a ticket and catch the next train to San Francisco. When I finally arrived, my daughter looked up at me, on the verge of tears. We went to a nearby cafe and I ordered pancakes, which are known to be a local favorite. 
As soon as the pancakes arrived, her face brightened slightly. She seemed to enjoy them and appeared a bit more at ease. I asked her what had happened. She explained that she hadn't been able to reach my husband at all when she arrived at the station. After waiting for about 30 minutes with no sign of him, she decided to take matters into her own hands and went to his house. I had given her his address just in case. Being tech-savvy, she used her smartphone to navigate there quickly. When she arrived and rang the doorbell, a woman's voice answered, Who are you? My daughter, taken aback, managed to respond, I'm here to see my dad. The woman told her to go home and that she couldn't see her father because she was a nuisance. Without even opening the door, the woman ended the conversation. Feeling rejected, my daughter returned to the San Francisco station. Fury overwhelmed me. If my husband's new circumstances meant our daughter couldn't see him, then it was time to take action. I told my daughter we were going home and as soon as we arrived, I began preparing to move out. When I explained the situation to my parents, they were outraged and offered to help however they could. For the time being, they agreed to let us stay with them until I could find a new job. Later my husband called and asked, I didn't see Sarah at the station. Did something happen? It seemed that my husband's mistress hadn't informed him that she had turned away his daughter. There were no messages from him on Sarah's phone when I went to pick her up, and I began to suspect he hadn't even gone to the station. I was stunned but decided to let it go for the moment. On the way back, Sarah fell ill and we had to return home. I texted my husband to explain that I had just finished at the hospital and apologized for not being able to call him. He responded with, I see. I understand. Told him I would reach out if anything else came up, feeling frustrated by how insincere his concern seemed. I thought to myself, for now I'll just leave him be. Afterwards I took steps to address the situation. I first sent his belongings to his address. Then I received the results of the investigation I had commissioned from the detective agency. I forwarded the evidence of the affair along with a certified letter to his workplace. A few days later, everything should have been delivered. Soon after, my husband called me, sounding agitated. Oh, hey, what's going on? Huh? What's this about? My husband asked. Just wanted to let you know what you've been up to. You've got to be kidding me. We're dealing with a major issue here. Of course it is. That's exactly what I'm addressing and I can't believe you're sending my belongings to me. I don't need your things, and I'm not paying rent anymore. What? Sarah and I moved out of that apartment. Oh, you moved out? Yes, about a month ago. What? So no one lived there for a month, and we still had to cover the rent? Well, that's true, but the lease was in your name, so that's not my problem. No. You're about to fall two months behind on rent and eviction is imminent. Is that why I've been getting calls from an unknown number? We could be in serious trouble if we lose that apartment. Why don't you just stay in San Francisco? You sent a certified letter to the company. Now they know about my affair and are calling in a replacement from headquarters to move me back to Los Angeles. If you send me all this stuff, it'll complicate my return, and to make matters worse, I don't have a place to stay in Los Angeles. I nearly laughed at how well the plan had worked, but I managed to stay composed. You've caused Sarah and me too much pain for there to be no consequences. This isn't over. I'm going to file for divorce and I'll be demanding alimony and child support. Oh no. Let's handle this through the lawyers and get it all settled. I hung up the phone and immediately hired a lawyer. The process unfolded as planned. The divorce was finalized without any issues and I secured alimony from both my ex-husband and his affair partner. I also filed for child support from him. The scandal of his affair led to his return from the transfer, making him the subject of ridicule within the company. He faced scorn from female colleagues and lost all prospects for promotion. However, he couldn't resign because he needed to fulfill his alimony and child support obligations. He must be deeply embarrassed. My daughter has become disillusioned with him. 
When he reached out to apologize and asked to see her, she declined. He truly deserves this. Meanwhile, I found a job and my daughter and I now live happily together in a new apartment. I'm committed to working hard to support her and to watch her grow up. 4-0 Minnie